Hi, what's up? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create these close up shots of mathematically generated shapes and terrain in Cinema 4D and Octane. To follow along with this tutorial, you need the official version of Octane. It needs to be updated to at least the I believe 2019 RC3 edition, because that's when they implemented the option to use Vectron objects and we need that. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider checking out my Instagram page, I will link it in the description and here you can see some of the last posts I created. Let's get started. So now let's set up some basics inside of Cinema 4D. I like to create a canvas that is 800 by 800 pixels first. Um, I already turned on Octane. Just click the little Octane symbol to activate it. Now let's go to Objects and down to Vectron. Now we've got the basic Vectron object. Now we need to change the script category to Vectron and the script presets, we're going to use the mandelbulb.txt. Now the, now the circle disappeared, but no worries, we're gonna change that in a bit. We're going to keyframe the power of this mandelbulb. Just click the button on power, then go to your timeline and just drag it to about, let's say 80 maybe change the power to seven and click the little button again. Now you can see that something happened on this little octane view panel. We got something here. Now that we've got this object, I basically will just look around and I will just play around with the timeline and see if I like some parts of the weird object that's been generated right here. Next, we're going to change the size of this Vectron. So let's go over here to Quartz and change it to, let's say 20. The object gets way, way bigger. Mm, let's maybe go down to 15. I think that's enough. So it's just easier to handle with your camera and it's easier to add some uh, depth later with some camera effects. So I'll be back once I found a spot on this timeline and on this object that I want to do a close up of that I think is very interesting to look at. This close-up right here is not final yet, but I think I'm going to work with this or a very similar part of the object. But I just took a uh, camera to make life a little easier for me. Because when you use a camera, you, the navigation is a little more smooth. Now let's add some color. This will help us find the right composition with these massive abstract objects. I've already got a material down right here. You can basically copy this. The material type is glossy. The BRDF model is Octane. And in the node editor, you can see that I just basically took a gradient and connected it to the film width. Here you can see the gradient texture. And I will also go through my other settings so you can basically just copy them to get the same result as I have. Just pause the video. If something has a value other than default, yeah, I deactivated the material layer and round edges, but the rest should pretty much be default or very close to default. The thing that um, just 
creates this color gradient object is the gradient texture inside of the film width. So let's just apply that to our Vectron. And we can already see that something's happening. We've got a lot of color in here. And we can very easily change those colors if we change our gradient right here. Now there's a lot of color in here already, but I want to make this pop a little more. So let's add some lights. Go to object lights and let's maybe take an area light. I'm going to zoom out of this camera to just look for the light and position it properly. A little trick I like to use is just stretching the area light out a little to the sides. I think that adds a special touch to your composition. And let's change inside of the octane light um, the sampling rate from 1 to 100 just to get a better high quality reflection and uh, high quality shadows. And let's go over to visibility, remove the check at camera vi visibility. I think I will clone this octane light and position a second one more to the left. And I'm going to turn down the power slightly because uh, this side here looks very blown out. And I'm going to test out another angle by copying my camera just to back up the camera I've got right now. I actually like this rainbow effect a lot that we've got right here. Let's maybe work on this. Let's add some depth to this. I'm going to go into my camera settings and set the focal length to 80 millimeters. Uh, zoom out a bit and then change the f-stop from 2.8 let's uh, let's take around 1 or 1.2 yeah you can see we've got a lot of depth now in the front of our focus object and in the background we need to define which point we need to we want to focus so let's um, click the pick focus icon right here and just click anywhere you want to focus now we've got our rainbow focused can just adjust the camera to make it look better maybe add some more depth by sliding down the f-stop just play around till you're happy with what you've got now i think i'm going to keep the f-stop on one let's add some post processing i'm going to turn off the glare power because i personally don't enjoy glare that much and i'm gonna bump up the bloom power yeah, I actually enjoy these washed out looks very much. Let's just click and see if our object is still focused. I like to do that just to be sure. And maybe let's uh, turn on the vignette effect. Um, let's enable the camera imager and bump up the vignetting. Yeah, I actually enjoy vignetting with this effect. It's kind of helping your eye to get focus on the important parts of the composition. Now I'm very happy with what we've got right here. So I'm going to first save this. So <laughs> I hope nothing crashes <laughs> before I save this. Um, I actually forgot, please be smarter than me and save very frequently. <laughs> And then I think I'm gonna add another light just uh, because this part right here is pretty dark and I don't know if this is good or if sh this should have some more light. So 
I'm just gonna try this. So the last light I added to this has a power of 40. I'm going to keep it like this, but I'm trying to um, increase the blur a little more, or rather the f-stop I mean. I mean decrease, not increase. <laughs> increase blurriness, decrease f-stop, that's what I meant. <laughs> And maybe let's optimize camera position a little more. I'm gonna back up the old camera and just play around with the new one. Just switch between your cameras and decide what you like best. Yeah, I think this is a big improvement from where we started. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it like this and save it. And I'm gonna see you back in Photoshop to add some final touches to this. Just a quick heads up, some people asked me how I export my Octane renders. Uh, I think I'm gonna just show this in this video right here. So you can go to Renderer and we're gonna select Octane Renderer. I like to use the dimensions 4000 by 5000 because that's the aspect ratio scaled up from what I use to uh, post my images to Instagram. Yeah, that's basically how I configure my output. Um, under save, yeah, I just uh, choose uh, JPEG, nothing special. Choose where your file should be saved. <laughs> Most of the time I just type in some gibberish and just save it. I can't think of a title right now. I'm gonna do that later. And that's basically it. Um, in the Octane settings, I most of the time I keep um, the max samples around 128, maybe less if the composition doesn't need as much rendered frames, but sometimes you need way more than 128 to get a very clear render in the end. Most of the time you encounter this problematic with very reflective objects. So now I'll see you back in Photoshop. Now that we're back in Photoshop, there's actually not much left to do uh, besides increasing the contrast and brightness of the middle part and slightly decreasing the brightness of the backgrounds or the background areas. First, I'm going to copy everything, go over to filter and the camera raw filter, and I'm going to adjust these settings until I'm happy with what I've got. Now that the first step is done, increasing our brightness, you can see it right here when I switch it on and off. Um, the next step is to decrease the background brightness. So let's do that. I'm gonna copy our original backup and I'm gonna decrease the brightness with the help of our curves. So let's do that. Click OK. And let's add a mask. I like to invert our mask with Control I and just uh, brush our mask back in on the parts where we want it. I don't know why, but I think the colors on the background are still a bit too intense. Um, I think I'm gonna try out decreasing the saturation. I just copied our current layer and disabled the filter masks and uh, cleared everything so we don't have any smart filters or curves. And now I'm gonna press Ctrl U and slide down the saturation slider. I'm gonna keep it at minus 20. And now basically I'm just gonna um, burn the um, final image we've got. So um, I'm just gonna disable my logo and press Control, Alt, Shift and E to create a new layer out of all the other visible layers below. And now I'm just gonna dodge it.
If you think you went a little overboard, you can just turn down the opacity of your new created layer. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep it at 90%. And this is our final render. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please consider checking out my Instagram. Go follow me there. And also consider subscribing if you enjoy this kind of content, tutorials and abstract digital art in general. And yeah, have a nice day. Bye.